Yeah, there you are. Okay, everyone. Um, I, it's my great pleasure to introduce uh, Samuel Capisi from Cryptosomniac. Uh, I'll hand over to you now, Sam. And Hey, what's going on, everybody? Bitcoin is just over 10,000. It's good. How many people in the room think it's going over to 50,000 this year? Raise your hand. Wow, a lot of people. How many think it'll actually ever get to half a million, 500,000? Anyone? Eh, some people. I'm asking you guys. This actually has nothing to do with my presentation. I'm just curious if I should be buying some more Bitcoin. <laughs> no better people to ask than a room full of Bitcoin enthusiasts, right? Uh, anyway, uh, my name's Sam Capizzi. I'm co-founder and CEO of CryptoSomniac, and... Uh, I guess to start, to tell you what that word means, I guess you can imagine, what do you think it means? Uh, we'll go to the next slide. By definition, uh, the sleepless sickness you contract after being bit by the crypto bug that renders its victim to become a non-contributing member of society, staying up all night watching the charts and crypto social media. And I'm sure a lot of people can relate. Uh, it was actually the name brought up to me uh, by my co-founder, Snay, who's in the audience here. You might run into him. We, uh, I don't think started out like this, but eventually we definitely got bit by this bug and have studied and studied and kept learning. And I think crypto has certainly consumed a lot of our lives. And I guess I, I learned a thing or two in college. I went to school for engineering and had to stay up many nights studying. And I think it worked out well, uh, studying cryptocurrency. And... I'm going to tell you just a quick story about myself and how I got to where I am, and it'll circle back in in just a few moments. You'll see kind of why. So I started out as an engineer. I went to school for uh, chemical engineering, to be specific. Worked in power, uh, pharmaceutical industry, and automation. And I worked for about two, two years full-time before I started to feel a lot like this cat here. I was staring at my screen at the monitor all day long, and I did not enjoy my job, in short. I actually grew quite depressed. It was not fun. Uh, I spent a lot of time actually watching cryptocurrency. I think that was around the first time I invested into Monero, Ethereum. I think it was around the time when I learned about the Ethereum Enterprise Alliance and Microsoft joining on board with them and finally made my first purchases, aside from Bitcoin, into some of the altcoins. And like I said, wasn't enjoying the job. I actually went to school at nights to become a real estate agent. And it's kind of funny. I can't believe that that's me up there. Uh, a couple of years ago, I went and got my license in real estate. I got a license at Keller Williams and did it at, after work uh, at nights. Got my license, thought that was the thing. Thought I just wanted money, worked for myself, thought it, was, thought it would be fun. And quickly learned, I guess it wasn't for me. It was not my passion. I just kind of wanted money and was doing things just for the sake of wanting money and not actually uh, doing something that I was passionate about. And it took me uh, about three years to realize that and make the decision to actually quit my job and just travel the world. And I didn't have anything in mind. I didn't know what I was going to do. I was invested into cryptocurrency, watching it. And... I went to a lot of cool places, and the first place I started out was actually right here. This was in the middle of the jungle in Thailand, and I went for a month, and I meditated. And in my room was a bed and a fan, and nothing else. There was no internet, there was not very good food, and I was filled with a bunch of monks, a room full of monks who taught me how to meditate, and it was just me, my thoughts, and that's about it. I didn't have any internet, no, no, you know, like I said, no good food, nothing, nothing fancy. And I learned a lot about myself. I learned a lot about the world. I learned a lot about what I wanted to do, what, you know, a lot about language, other people. And it was really the start of a year-long trip where I just went solo backpacking by myself. And I guess after that, I went and I did a lot of the fun stuff. I went to, uh, is this slide working? Clicker. I skipped a couple of slides. I think it's slow. Maybe it's lagging. Can I go back one slide? I think I skipped one. Let me go forward one. 
Forward, forward one more. Oh, is it coming? Okay. Sorry about that. Well, anyway, I went on, and I think the um, there should be a picture before this or a slide before this. Maybe it got cropped out. Whatever. Anyway, I went, and this was really fucking cool. Uh, I went, and I got to swim with killer whales. <laughs> and they look a lot bigger in person than they do in this picture here. And... It was definitely a lot colder than you could imagine <laughs> swimming in the water. And like I said, I'm going to circle this back around and tell you why that why this matters in a second. Uh, and I finished my trip right in here. And this was a box, a 95 degree sweat box that I lived in for a few months while I changed bed sheets for a hostel in Thailand. And I left my six figure job in engineering to go change sheets in a box where I didn't get paid at all. And I guess the reason I did that is because I had the freedom to do whatever I wanted in life. And I had found that learning about other people, other experiences was more rewarding than any amount of money. And it was my complete option to, you know, to live this type of lifestyle, to, you know, change bed sheets for a living. And I got to learn and meet a lot of cool and amazing people, come up with a lot of ideas. It gave me a lot of time to fail in a lot of other business ventures. I started a lot of things up while I was traveling that ended up not working out. And I guess the reason why I'm telling you this is because I think a lot of people in this room may have invested into cryptocurrency, some maybe later than early, uh, others. But even if you invested into Bitcoin or cryptocurrency as the middle of last year, you know, you're up three, four, five hundred percent probably, as long as you didn't invest into BitConnect. Uh, so everyone has a, the option right now, or a lot of people anyway, I won't say everybody, but we have an option right now with this uh, additional freedom, whether that be financial or emotional freedom to do and do different things. A lot of ICOs have the decisions to make cool projects. A lot of ICOs out there aren't taking you know, it seriously. Some are scams, but you have a responsibility, I think, now with some of that extra freedom, that extra time, to do something that you're really passionate about and change the world. And I think it's very important to keep that in mind, especially if you have what I have right now, some extra time, extra freedom to do something that you care about and are passionate about. And I think that for me, traveling the world, learning about different things, experiences, different cultures, people, really gave me the opportunity to think long and hard about what that is. So today, I'm gonna talk to you about what we do and specifically 15 ways that we, or, or 15 ways that ICOs can better market themselves. And I know that there's a lot of consumers in here, so you can take a lot of what, what I'm gonna talk about today to help you decide uh, what is a good ICO or a good project, whether it be a blockchain startup or not, or an ICO or not, rather. And I have this quote up here that says, if you, are not, uh, if you don't care about marketing uh, your project, then you're not a good CEO. And it's a little abrasive, that, that statement there, but I take it seriously, and I'm a little abrasive myself. I like to be very forward-thinking, and if you're not you know, representing whom you are in your company uh, in a straightforward and honest manner, uh, then you're not going to care you know, about what you're doing. So uh, that's kind of going to be the basis of my talk today. And if you don't take marketing seriously and uh, take it with you know, full responsibility, someone else may do it for you. And they may not have your best interests at heart. Take, for example, Warren Buffett saying Bitcoin uh, and cryptocurrencies won't end well. Bitcoin is a scam, yada, yada, yada. Of course, this is a lighthearted example. But for real, if you don't take responsibility of marketing your ICO, your project, your company, it doesn't even matter if you're an ICO or not. It, it's important. And there's a number of ways that you can do that. And I'm going to cover, like I said, 15 ways. Now... ICOs are usually split up into three stages, typically, and I honestly don't think a lot changes from leg to leg to leg, aside from your marketing budget. You have your pre-ICO, you allocate some funds to market, uh, get your project off the ground. Then you have your ICO stage, where you kind of open it up to the public, bring in other people, investors, have more money. And then you're going to bring things in-house, usually afterwards, after your ICO is over, the post-sale. Uh, post and not a lot changes. You should still be marketing between them. Like I said, I think the only thing that changes is the budget that you'd like to allocate for each. And 
there's real no secret here. It's really about stacking all the tools that you have uh, in your repertoire. You have email funnels. You have Facebook. You have Twitter. You have Telegram. You have YouTube. Uh, there is no one shortcut, uh, and that's the graphic there in the bottom. There really is no shortcut to success here. It's really about getting in the eyes of your investors. And as a consumer, you want to see your project or a project you're interested in more than one place. You're not going to buy something just because you see it at the top of coin market cap in a banner ad. You're not going to buy it just by seeing a Facebook ad. You need to be in your uh, customers' minds from all assets, whether that be Facebook, YouTube, Reddit. It, the list goes on and on, and there's a number of ways to do that. And we've worked with over 50 ICOs personally, and we've seen a lot of what works and a lot of what doesn't work. And we've seen a lot of budgets. And right here, I drew out a pie chart for a tr um, marketing budget that I think is suitable for most. I mean, it's going to change from ICO company to company. But I think that this is a pretty good start. You'll notice that YouTube is probably the biggest. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we use each of these platforms. And as a consumer, how you can look at that to see how other ICOs are working and other blockchain startups. But here's a rough estimate after working with so many ICOs, a budget that we think works. Second to that, I think, is press releases, just because they cost a lot of money. Getting on Coindesk, getting on Cointelegraph, the Merkle, it ain't free. Some of them charge as high as half a Bitcoin, a Bitcoin which is $10,000 to get on some of these websites. So this is just a general budget. And why don't we start with the first way that you can help bolster your marketing. So the first way is to look at who's following you. You can see who's following you using a great tool called Social Rank. And uh, for example, I used it to see who was following me. And I had Charles Hoskinson of Cardano. I reached out to him for an interview. I had Prince EA, who is a very motivational YouTube speaker. You might have seen some of his videos before. He's got millions and millions of views on YouTube. And we connected. And you can use the people that are following you. You scratch their back, they'll scratch yours. You know, you can ask them to write on you. You can retweet them. I think John McAfee's here. Wasn't he on the list, the speaking list? We all know what he's done, tweeting some things. I don't advocate pump and dumps. But you can reach out to the people that are following you for, you know, partnerships. You can ask to write on each other and help each other out. And that's what we did with some of the companies and people following us. So you can use that tool to help you. Next up is YouTube. And I think a lot of ICOs underestimate the power of YouTube. YouTube works really well because as a consumer, as a customer, even myself, I watch a lot of YouTubers. I watch the same YouTubers day to day to get advice on the markets, what's going on. And we buy from whom we know, from whom we like, and whom we trust. Typically, you know, if your mom and dad says, we like, you know, you like this product, you're going to listen to her. As opposed to seeing it on Facebook, through a YouTube, uh, Facebook ad, or wherever. Not that those aren't effective. You want to kind of have all of them working in pieces. But YouTube is, in fact, I think the best place to start for an ICO. And... We've seen and worked with a lot of ICOs, and these are just a few short examples here. We've seen a direct correlation between the number of videos a company has on YouTube, whether that be interviews, ICO video reviews, etc., and them actually hitting their hard cap. And we've seen that here. For example, take the B token, 72 videos on YouTube and uh, on YouTube that we've helped them acquire. And they hit their hard cap and are expected, I'm sure, to do very well p once their ICO actually hits on some of the exchanges. Conversely, at the bottom, uh, Umbrella Coin, seven videos we found on YouTube, did not hit their hard cap. And this is just a small example. There's hundreds of ICOs now. We see a direct correlation between how many videos they have on YouTube and you know, the success of their ICO. And I think it's more effective than any other type of marketing that I'm going to talk about today. And you really need to consider it. Uh, it's second to that, there's something really cool. We've worked with about 50 ICOs. We've seen one ICO take advantage of this. This is YouTube ads. And if you're an ICO, what you can do is some of the YouTubers that are covering your ICO, you can actually ask them uh, politely to connect your AdWords account to your account and you can add, uh, add budget or ad spend and attach it to a video. And it works as a win-win situation, and that's the best way in any business, honestly, uh, to conduct business, a win-win. So what it does for the YouTuber, it allows them to get better views on their video, 
Uh, they get additional subscribers because you're paying money to have their video promoted. So they're willing to say, you know, yeah, of course, I'll take, you know, spend a couple hundred bucks on my video, advertise it. Meanwhile, the ICO gets to promote their content. Uh, so it's a win-win. And we've worked with one ICO that wanted to do that, and we saw great results. And it's something that I think a lot of ICOs will catch on to eventually. But I think it's a great way to really bolster up, especially if you're an ICO. And like I said, it's a win-win for the YouTuber because he gets additional views, subs, and they get to promote their content. Second is Facebook. And a lot of rules changed recently. They banned a lot of advertising on uh, Facebook, I'm sure you've seen. Uh, our, our, a lot of our team members worked pretty heavily in Facebook for the past several years. We strongly believe that those regulations and laws will come and you'll be able to advertise on Facebook in a more, in a more regulated manner. And I think it's good and healthy overall for the market, but there's still some things that you can do on Facebook even without that. Uh, but previously, things like MLM marketing, we've had regulation come to Facebook advertising. And I think that that will actually come for Facebook. I think they'll want to take advantage of that. But for the time being, I think it is a little bit scammy. I'm sure all of you have seen, you know, give us a Bitcoin today. We'll give you two tomorrow, just like that other guy was saying. But you should bef definitely be taking advantage of pixels if you're not. Uh, fi pixels are huge. You should have them on every page of your website. They allow you to track a ton of information. You could track anything from the uh, the way that your person, the, the, the way that an investor or a potential visitor of your website looks by demographic, age, you can track uh, registrations on your website, you can track uh, anything, searches on your website, and then you can use that data to actually create a custom uh, audience and retarget to people that look like that person that visited your website. Now, as I said, Facebook's making it a little difficult right now to do that. But I think that will change in the next several months. This is also a really great tool that's free to use. And we've used it to grow our Facebook page by thousands in a really short amount of time. When someone, when you post content to your Facebook page and people engage on it, whether that's a like uh, or a share or whatever, you can click on them and see who liked it and invite those people to your page. It's free. You don't have to spend any money to and get those people. And those are your most qualified and interested people. They're people that already engage with your content. So you can invite them to like your page and obviously social media growth is important to have a public presence. So this is a free method that you can use that has helped us grow our social media followings by, or at least on Facebook, by thousands in a very short amount of time. Next up is Twitter. And Twitter is I think probably the second or third biggest tool, I think, for a lot of ICOs and cryptocurrencies to be leveraging. You know, if we were talking about the fashion industry, you know, Instagram might be great. Uh, there's different social media outlets that are better for crypto. I think Twitter is one of the stronger ones, definitely, for cryptocurrency. And there's a really cool tool that you can use. It's called Tweeps Map. I think I actually misspelled it in the top of the Prezo there, but if anyone wants these slides actually afterwards, feel free to come up to me. But Tweeps Maps is a, a Tweeps Map, rather, is a really great tool that allows you to do some really cool things. So you can automatically follow, well it's not automatic, but you can use a tool called Rapid Click to add followers that actually are uh, interested in what you're, you know, what you're selling, what your company is, what you represent. You can target, you can do very highly and advanced types of targeting. You can target by hashtags that people are searching for, you can search by the certain criteria that's listed in their profile. You can search for people that follow people like Satoshi Light or Vitalik. You can uh, even check out who's following you by demographic. You can see where your followers are by country. You can target certain countries if you are interested in uh, you know, certain demographics over others. You can also send them direct messages and uh, upon each unique follow. So uh, it's a really great tool to use. Next is Reddit. Uh, Reddit is great, and I think it kind of fulfills itself and really starts to populate on its own, and it's a matter of cross-promoting Reddit onto some of your other platforms. But it's important, at least at first, for a good initial design. Uh, take, for example, the top one here compared to, believe it or not, Dogecoin actually has a very beautifully designed subreddit. Uh, links on the side, which I think there's a little shadow, so it's hard to see. But subreddit design, all these things matter that people pay attention to. Telegram is also important, and even as a uh, as a, an investor or, or a you know 
Consumer, you want to see engagement in the Telegram. It's where people go. It's kind of your second or third tier level of marketing. You have this funnel here at the top with some of those other socials. And then as you bring people in, especially to things like Telegram, you want to be able to manage that community, get them to the right place when they're asking questions to you. You know, when's your whitelist? Where's your whitelist? When does the token sale start? What platform are you built on, etc.? You need to keep those people engaged. Press is important, obviously. There's a number of different uh, press release uh, platforms out there. Coindesk, the Merkle, Cointelegraph. You have all these different platforms. You can even pay to be populated in rankings higher uh, on some of these ICO features listed websites. Uh, and even as a consumer, you can take that into account. Does a company have enough money to be listed at the top of this website? You know, so take that into consideration. Next is UX design, and it's really important. And here's an example of a token sale that's live, or was live at least at the time of this photo, and they have the token sale button at the top left. This is important. The more clicks you make someone go through to get to your token sale, the, the fact that it doesn't even say that the token sale is live right on the front page is a big concern. You're, you're missing out. I think it's something, something along the lines of for every field or form or click through that you add someone to go through to the next, pi uh, next part of your process or sale, you lose something like 20% of the customers. So every page that you add in between, you get a drop off. Here's another one. How do you expect me to invest into this kind of company? You can't even get the damn front page of your website to look clean. People take these into consideration and I take them into consideration when I'm investing into a project. You can use email, and for email, it's really important to provide value. And I think this rings true even in any type of marketing, whether it's email or not. You give something away for free. Give something of value if you want to get them onto your email list. People just you know, sign up for our email to get your newsletter. Well, we don't care about your newsletter. Give them something in return for free. That's the best way to attract people uh, to, or at least giving your email away. Give them something of value. Active campaign is an amazing tool as well, and it can be you, you might even want someone dedicated to fully understand what active campaign is. And you can create all kinds of amazing funnels with active campaign. If someone opens my email but doesn't click the link, bug them again in two days. If they do open it and read the link, send them that way. If they do read that link and they get over there and then something else happens, send them over here. You can do all kinds of cool things with active campaign. IFTT, if then. Uh, if this, then that. It's basically like a smart contract. If something happens, then do this. It's a website. It's connected, and you can use it on almost anything. If I leave my house, turn off the lights. If I post to Twitter, post on Reddit. If I post to Reddit, also post on Facebook. You can use this to really help manage a lot of your social media, especially as there are a lot of ways to effectively manage your social media. I think it's a great tool, and you can even use it, like I said, for a ton of things. It connects to almost every single app you can imagine on your phone. And one more thing, we are uh, Crypto Somniac. We have our own platform. In fact, I think this picture is a little bit outdated, but we do a lot of cool things on our website, portfolio tracking, news. We're in the process of writing our own white paper to start our own ICO. Uh, again, feel free to come up, uh, up to me afterwards to grab a copy of these slides. My co-founder, Sne, is somewhere in the crowd here. And we'll be happy to give them to you. We're starting our own ICO hopefully later this year. Uh, so feel free to come up and reach out to me. Thank you. Any questions? Any questions, anybody? Go ahead. In the back first. I'm sorry, say that one more. We, we've helped a lot of ICOs in that example. We cited BTOKEN and Black Moon Crypto that had done probably, uh, from our experience, probably top five, top ten as far as YouTube coverage of any ICO we've seen in the space. Leverage YouTube. Oh, the one. So I'm sorry. Indahash. Indahash ICO leverage YouTube ads. Uh, it's one ICO we worked with that I saw that did that. Like I said, it's a win-win. The YouTuber gets better views, better subs. And meanwhile, the ICO is getting more coverage on YouTube. And it's something that I, d I just don't think a lot of these guys at ICOs have you know, been aware of yet. Yeah, some of them don't even realize YouTube is such a great and powerful platform in of itself, but YouTube ads can help take it to another level. Did you have a question? Go ahead. Uh, 
Absolutely. So he asked, just so, so everyone asks, what's the typical cost for a promotion for an ICO? I guess everything encompassing. I would say it, it depends. I think 250 to 500 is an acceptable amount. 250 thousand to 500 thousand. A big chunk of that I think is spent on YouTube. The you, you know these YouTubers demand upwards of five, ten ETH per project to cover. It really depends. There's a lot of different tools out there. You can be on a smaller scale. You can be on a larger scale. But I'd say 250 thousand, a white paper and a website these days is all you need to run an ICO. And it can be good or bad. You get a lot of, to be honest, shitty ICOs because of that. Uh, and it's a lot of work to weed out, you know, the good from the bad. But I'd say about 250000 is a pretty good start. Any other questions? We have time for one more. We help uh, market a lot of ICOs. We worked with about 40 or 50 in all kinds of varying capacities, some some of these uh, features, some you know, want us to do this, want us to do that, and we've worked with a lot. And today, I just wanted to share a bunch of ways that we helped ICOs, and ways that you, you know, you, even as an ICO yourself, you could take some of this and use it to your, you know, your own ability to help what you're doing. Okay. Well, thank you guys very much. Thank you, Samuel. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, so we have uh, another 10 minute break uh, and then we will be joined by uh, Jeff Tenery from Moonlighting and uh, Raja Jindal from uh, Twism. And, uh, and for myself, I will apo apologetically bow out now because I have to fly back to the United Kingdom. So thank you as well for your time today. Any of, them, any of you that watched my presentation as well. And I hope you all enjoy uh, the rest of your conference you have. Um, about four or five, you've got five more uh, people to present for the rest of the day. One being uh, Dashana uh, from uh, four, four New Limited that sadly couldn't make it earlier, but now is here for the end of the day. So I suggest that you stay to watch that too. Thank you very much. <laughs>